1942-1943, Peter, we would have seen literally flocks or uh, squadrons, if you will, of Tiger Moths here uh, and at all other places or a number of Air Force bases around uh, Australia. Tamora, for now, another two that come to mind. And uh, this aircraft has been flown by Gary Hearn. Gary actually is um, a uh, China Southern Airline pilot. In his spare time, he must create a little bit, I guess, to find his Tiger Moth. Point Cook, uh, when he's not out there uh, pushing airlines around the sky. Today, you've got a lot of experience flying Tiger Moth, and I think it's a truism that uh, people say it's easy to fly a Tiger Moth, but it's hard to fly one. Uh, it's, not, it's not your average Cessna, I can assure you. Of course, again, parking back to uh, the same type of construction that they can in Korea as a spotter aircraft. aircraft was designed and built for uh, World War II usage. At the same time, if you're flying one of these and you want a spare part on the internet, credit card, you can come
this particular boomerang was flown by his dad as part of uh, 84 squadron flying on, on reconnaissance and convoy work uh, over Milwaukee, um, in uh, Dutch New Guinea, the Arafura Sea, that sort of thing. And um, the aircraft has been completely rebuilt from the ground up. Um, work was started and finally finished uh, at Caboolture, where um, the work was completed by Matthew Denning, who... It's another example of how de Havilland was able to utilise uh, wood uh, as it had um, in uh, its mosquito. Certainly was the first aircraft to be used uh, uh, This particular machine is a uh, two-seat trainer. Three is a single-seat plane. Very, very highly successful uh, aircraft for export by the UK post World War II. So today we're flying the Eurocopter AS350 Bravo Alpha Squirrel. As you'll see, for something that weighs approximately the same weight as an average family car, it's quite a manoeuvrable helicopter. Can you see the tank here presenting to your car? You're going to perform a slide to the web. This is uh, easier.